Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you want me to run with, and I will pick one of the highly rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Thunder FPS. He says Splinter Cell Blacklist Loadout. MP7 Silencer Iron V Scope. Squad suppression, don't forget to hide and get more enemies without being noticed. Have fun. Now I'm going to be happy when Battlefield 4 gets here because then we're not going to get loadouts that make you sacrifice weapon performance for certain attachments. Battlefield 4's attachment system makes so much more sense. In fact, extended mags is not really something that you have to worry about too much in Battlefield 4 anymore because they give stuff like PDWs. The PDWR now has 30 round standard instead of this 20 round thing. So uh, the obvious choice with any gun is to get the extended mag for pretty much anything and now we just don't have to take up an attachment slot for that in BF4. So rather than having to sacrifice my 30 round or my 40 round magazine with the MP7 down to a 20 round magazine which just sucks, uh, now I can actually in Battlefield 4 run the same gun with suppressor and still have a full magazine. That being said, Battlefield 4 is not here yet so to attach the suppressor on the MP7 I have to sacrifice extended mags cutting my magazine, my ammo count in half per magazine. Now this wouldn't be such a bad deal except the MP7 has a horrible reload time. So you got 20 rounds in a magazine, you're doing 20 damage maximum per shot, your killability with this weapon is just horrible. Very rarely was I able to kill two people with one magazine and most of my deaths while using this weapon are being caught mid reload. I have to hide somewhere, try and get that reload off and rely heavily on my sidearm to down people. And I just got into so many situations where I would switch to my sidearm, kill somebody, try and reload that as fast as possible, and then there'd be three more guys. Something that my sidearm just couldn't deal with. So how bad is the reload speed on the MP7? Well, it's 2.4 seconds for the short reload, which on you know a powerful assault rifle with 30 rounds in a magazine would be kind of average. But on a tiny little PDW, that's pretty long. The long reload is 2.6 seconds, so it's barely longer than the short reload. The problem is that if you're running with only 20 rounds in a magazine, you hit that long reload all the time. So you gotta count to 2.6 before you can re-engage your, engage your opponents. And in Battlefield, that's plenty of time for somebody to flank up, push up on your position, and get you while you're still reloading. Now, I've probably addressed this issue a few other times, but I've always been confused by the unnecessarily long reload time on the MP7. As you can see, the magazine fits into the pistol grip of the weapon. It reloads exactly like a pistol. There are no other pistols in the game that really reload beyond the two second mark. They're all very fast reloads. And since this thing reloads the exact same way, I don't really understand why they gave it such a long reload time. In fact, to better balance out the weapon, considering that the uh, M5K is sort of superior to this for hipfire capabilities, I think they should have given it a faster reload. That being said, I stick by my advice of my previous videos, especially the last loadout video where I was using a suppressed PP-19. If you've got a suppressed weapon, you know your map, you know your strategies well, you can do very well. And you're going to see that especially at the very end of this video. I'll be playing a round of Team Deathmatch on Sabalon Pipeline. Now what's so cool about Sabalon Pipeline and suppressed weapons is that there is tons of tiny little areas to hide. Normally you rely on the minimap, the sounds of weapons to give away your position, but in Sabalon Pipeline there's just so many little crates and little nooks and little crevices for people to hide in and run back into while they're reloading that it was very hard for my opponents to pinpoint my situation and I was able to absolutely mop them up. I'm not saying the MP7 suppressed really allowed that to happen. I'm pretty sure any other gun suppressed would have been just fine for it, but the fact is you can still make uh, relatively crappy weapon setups, which this is, work on those kinds of maps. Now, all things considered, I really have become a much bigger fan of the IRNV site ever since DICE nerfed the heck out of it. Uh, and mostly the nerf was on Metro, so they kind of balanced it out on some maps. But if you're playing on a map where the IRNV site still functions really well, it is still a very, very good site. My biggest complaint against it is probably the fact that watching green and yellow footage on YouTube isn't particularly visually nice to look at. It just 
isn't like as beautiful as Battlefield 3 is. So you turn Battlefield 3 into a green game and all of a sudden your footage just kind of looks meh. But uh, other than that, it is so easy to pinpoint targets and I love using it to peek around corners tactically and try and figure out where my opponents are and just get that extra split second of a reaction time because yellow on green is very easy to figure out where your opponents are. It's very easy to pull somebody out of the background when you switch to this site and you can do it just fine while aiming down normal sites but you do have like a fraction of a second reaction time uh, improvement when you're using the IRNV site. Of course it's got its downsides, you know, you have to aim down sights for a lot of stuff. You have complete black surrounding to the site there, so you can't see anything else. And I have definitely been watching corners and not even noticed guys sneaking up directly to my left. And it's gotten me killed in that situation, but you just have to kind of get used to quickly peeking down the sights rather than just zeroing in on your sights. So just look down, peek around a corner, unzoom your sights, look around you, zoom down your sights. You just gotta keep aiming down and then non-aiming down to make sure you're aware of your surroundings. Now here we are on Sabalon where I was just absolutely cleaning people up and you'll notice here like I do have to switch to my pistol to try and finish people off but I was able to clean up that whole corner just because of that IRNV sight and peeking just enough to see my opponents. It's very easy to do that when they're highlighted like that. Now the suppressor is of course going to reduce the bullet velocity on the MP7, which is already very low, it starts off at 390 meters per second and reduces it to 270 meters per second. So, I mean, this thing practically becomes a paintball gun in Battlefield 3. But as long as you're using it in close quarters, it's not too big of a deal. You just gotta lead extra when people are running uh, past you. Hip firing is still pretty good with this weapon. Now, suppressor makes your hip fire accuracy less. A lot of people like to run the MP7 with the laser sight and extended mags for that sort of laser beam hip fire weapon it's still pretty darn accurate even with the suppressor on here so you'll see me get a lot of hip fire kills no problem in close quarters I think it's time to finish off this video with a nice little 10 kill streak actually I think it's 10 I wasn't counting but uh, I do get quite a few kills using the mp7 and even switching in the sidearm you'll notice here is what I'm talking about in Sabalon where you can just kind of stick in close quarters. There's all these little angles, tons of debris that makes it kind of hard for you to be spotted out. And then you run around with a suppressor and nobody knows where the heck you are. And that guy kept trying to get a blowtorch kill on me and I was just farming him all day. He never ended up getting it. I will say the more I play with the IRNV site, the more I get excited for the Battlefield 4 light abilities where you can turn off lights and rooms by hitting the switch or taking out a generator and turning it like almost pitch black. I'm sure they won't have it completely pitch black because uh, people need to be able to navigate themselves out of a room. But if they make it extremely dark, I can't wait to see what that's like for people with IRNV sites. Think about an IRNV site, a flash hider, so you have no muzzle flash. Uh, and then, I mean, that could be a suppressor right there. So all of a sudden you're like this stealth silent killer in a dark room. And again, that guy wanted to make himself an easy kill by running around with a blowtorch. It takes a while to kill somebody with a blowtorch. And uh, I mean, I'm not saying I haven't ever been killed by a blowtorch, but it's pretty hard to do, especially in these close quarter maps when people are just running around so quickly. So overall, I really do like the MP7. I think it's a great little fun gun. I really don't like this loadout. I love suppressors. I love running with suppressed weapons, but having to run around with 20 rounds in a magazine and this reload time is just horrible. It's painful to play with. So I wouldn't recommend this loadout to anyone. If you're looking for some sort of suppressed thing in close quarters, go with anything other than the MP7. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what you would like me to run with for next week's episode. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.